Coming up on today's show, we take a look at students who are balancing both online school and work during COVID-19. Plus, we speak to a student who tested positive for the coronavirus. Christy has some fresh new DIY tips to help you keep your hands clean. And we have some information on the AP testing. Get ready because RD TV starts now. Hello Cavs, I'm Darius Darby and today is Friday, April 24th. The South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and the Superintendent of Education Molly Spearman announced on Wednesday that schools would be canceled for the rest of the school year. The RNE TV crew will keep you updated remotely. Today's top story hits close to home. Senior Shaylin Tisdale and her family tested positive for COVID-19. RNE TV reporter Gabby Greenlee spoke with her and her family about their experiences with the virus. So thank you guys so much for doing this interview. I hope you guys are feeling okay. Mm -hmm. And so I just have a couple of questions for you guys to sort of talk about your experience and all of that. Okay. Awesome. So can both of you tell me sort of about some of the symptoms that you guys went through and your experience with the virus? Um, so it came on really suddenly. Um, I was feeling fine the day before. Um, I actually started experiencing symptoms and the first symptom I got was an extremely bad headache. It was like migraine headache and it did not go away. The headache took over my entire head and started like kind of right above my eyes and it hurt to look up and the headaches were just terrible. Um, you got a really bad um, fever. I think my highest fever was 102.9 and that lasted for three days, maybe. Um, chills, body aches, um, no appetite. And I kind of knew I had it when um, my smell and taste went away. Um, I think my symptoms were a little bit worse than the girls. Um, I uh, started off, of course, like I said, with a loss of taste and smell. Then I had fatigue and fatigue was followed by um, temperature. And then temperature was followed by um, loss of um, appetite and nausea. And then it went from loss of appetite and nausea to just a general just not being well. And then uh, a cough. I had a really bad cough and um, shortness of breath. Um, and feeling a sense of pressure um, as if uh, I had a bag of potatoes on my chest. My symptoms were about the same, but um, our timelines were a little different. The first, um, the like she said, it came on suddenly. Um, I kind of knew I was about to get sick because a thing for me always when I'm about to get sick, I break out in hives. But we were outside the day before in the pollen, so... I just thought I was being affected, like allergies, a sinus infection. And I woke up the next day and I remember having aches and a really bad headache. After just talking about the experience and sort of how it felt for you, did you guys ever get tested for it or did you just sort of know? My dad actually got tested before we did. So after his test came back positive, I was kind of already like, yeah. And then my mom went to the doctor maybe two or three days after he did. And she hadn't taken her test, but the physicians at um, her doctor's office were almost positive she had it. So I'm like, well, if they have it, it's, I have to have it. Uh, with the symptoms, he was uh, about 75% sure that it was COVID and that he wanted me to have the nasal swab uh, to make sure that, to, to confirm his diagnosis, to, you know, to make sure that that was it. I started self-diagnosing myself. Uh, I started looking up the symptoms, but I, originally I was like, no, I, there's no way I have it. But we did end up going to get tested. We got a test different from what most people get. Most people get the nose swab. We went and got the anti- antibody antibody test where they draw blood and you get your test results back between 10 and 15 minutes instead of the normal three to four days with the, the nose swab so i uh went to a drive-in 
nasal swab testing and about three to four days later, the results came back positive. But do you have any sort of suggestions for other people who haven't gotten it yet or are trying to prevent the spread? What are your suggestions? Continue social distancing. If you don't have to leave the house, don't leave the house for unnecessary um, reasons. Um, if you do go like to the grocery store, wear a mask. It might be kind of embarrassing at first because I remember I did not want to wear a mask at first because it's kind of unattractive. But to wear your mask, um, stay six feet, wash your hands. We have a rule as soon as you get in the house, put down everything and just go and wash your hands because you're likely to touch something that could um, care, not, not carry, but something that may be infected. And if it's not infected, you might infect it. The thing that I would say is to always be on guard don't think that it cannot happen to you because it will wash your hands social distancing um and if you don't feel well definitely stay away from other people i know i see a lot of kids our age on social media maybe doing pool parties or birthday parties or stuff like that and i would just say you never know who could have it because just like we said earlier it just comes on you like you don't have really have symptoms before it just one day like i said i woke up and it was just on me i would say don't think you can't get it because i was one of those people that were like oh i can't get it like i can't get it is there anything else you'd sort of like to add those are all of my questions for you well it's something that even though you may have resolved the worst of it you will it's something that i think i will be dealing with for weeks to come. And it's kind of scary because you don't know at what point you are no longer contagious. It, it's so new, you just don't know at what point you're safe, not safe, contagious, not contagious, dangerous to others. So you always have to treat the situation with caution. And thank you guys so much for doing this interview. I'm glad oh. you guys are. I'm glad you guys are feeling better. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Gabby. Please continue to practice social distancing. The CDC recommends that everyone wear a mask in public and to remain six feet apart. In school news, the South Carolina Library just announced the winners for the Young Minds Dreaming Poetry Contest. Congratulations to sophomore Alex Winslow, who placed second in the contest. The yearbook staff just completed the 2020 yearbook. The theme for the year is 2020 vision, and today we're going to reveal the cover. Can I get a drum roll, please? This is a special cover though. It is heat sensitive. Once it is in sunlight or heats up, it changes colors. Yearbooks are on sale for only $70 at jostensyearbooks.com. Just search Richland Northeast High School. RE is just minutes away from Fort Jackson, and several military families send their students to RE. April is the month of the military child, and to celebrate from home, RE has been putting a spotlight on some military students on social media. RE has been highlight highlighting uh, military children um, throughout the month of April. So, on their social media platform, they have been highlighting students um, who parents have served or are currently serving and having a picture of that child and just just shining a light on those students. A lot of people don't know that there's a big population of military students at RE. So um, it just brings awareness to who we are, what we're doing, the sacrifices that we make. And it's just basically bringing it to everyone's attention as far as the RE family. It just lets you know who is a military kid because there's a lot of them that goes there because of Fort Jackson. Um, so it just allows you to, I don't know, like kind of connect with other people who's kind of dealt the same thing or something similar. They face so much adversity um, that a lot of people don't aren't aware of. A lot of people don't realize that we're making sacrifices just like our parents, not as big of a sacrifice, but we do move around. We do have to deal with being able to adjust in different environments. I think it's important that we celebrate that um, just to understand that it's not easy being a military uh, kid. Um, and the journey it is. Um, and they're very um, courageous and adaptable and they move so much. Every three years they have to move and they have to adapt to a new environment. And it takes a lot and sometimes people take it for granted. And we just wanted to let those students know that we see them, we hear them, and we love them. 
while many students are spending their day waking up after 2 p.m. and deciding what show they plan to binge watch next. Some students are balancing more than their hobbies in e-learning assignments. Here's RNE TV reporter Ebony Christie with more. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that has affected the entire nation, many students whose jobs remain open, like Christy Perez, have decided to continue working. I don't really have a choice. My parents' financial situation isn't really the best. So a lot of people don't know that about me just because I work so hard and I always pay for everything myself and it's always been like who I am. So that's the only reason I'm really working and I like my job, I like what I do. With society's social distancing, most schools have turned to e-learning as a resource for continued learning. And as a result, you go. thank you. Oftentimes, many students go from here to here, which can become completely overwhelming, especially coming home after a long shift and having to complete all of those online assignments. The biggest challenge I would say would be finding the motivation because sometimes like when I'm working late I'll be tired but I'll have a deadline so I have to still make sure that I do my work because that's ultimately what's most important. Plus our shifts are kind of shorthanded right now so I assist the shifts and I'm like right under them so it's been a lot of work and it's made it difficult for me to do my e-learning. As employed students juggle both work and school, many are in search of a better balance. I feel like if we had one due date where all the assignments would do instead of multiple due dates throughout the you know time period that it would be easier and more efficient. I think the challenge is just keeping up with the work because certain teachers are posting like a bunch of work and work for every single day when like we don't really meet every day. Um, and the communication isn't really clear from them and then it just ends up being like one big mess and I don't really know what I need to do and what I don't need to do. Though there are many students still working during the pandemic, COVID-19 forced many jobs and businesses to close its doors, which has left some students currently unemployed. It sucks being without a job. Um, ultimately, uh, because I'm not necessarily the main breadwinner in my family, it doesn't really affect me um, as much as it may affect other people. Um, which definitely brings a lot of perspective to the issue, but also um, it is a little bit frustrating at the moment because I do need money and I do want to work, but I understand that ultimately it's probably not the best conditions to do so. I just set up a great schedule balancing work and school. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all that, I was making my own money. As COVID-19 has presented unexpected circumstances, Teachers have made efforts to make e-learning more efficient for all students, including those working. Reporting for RNE TV Live, I'm Ebony Christie. Thanks, Ebony. As we continue our time out of school, students are still encouraged to check Google Classroom often. All of the assignments will still count. If you have any questions, please contact your teachers. Superintendent Molly Spearman submitted a waiver to suspend most state tests. AP and IB testing were not included, but the College Board did make revisions to AP testing amidst school closures. RNA TV reporter Kincaid Cummings spoke with K-12 school officials to see what these changes would look like. During the coronavirus pandemic and the closure of schools, many AP students and teachers wondered how testing would be handled. And that, um that they would change the format in which testing is going to be done, seeing as how schools are going to be closed. So I believe that they did a great job in disseminating that information out to schools as quickly as possible to let us know that there was going to be a new format so that then we could communicate that to teachers and teachers could then communicate that to schools and to parents and so forth. They've really monitored and adjusted the test because my greatest fear was, and we didn't know until like May 3rd, exactly what was going to be on the test. We did know that the test was going to be reduced from three hours and 25 minutes to just 45 minutes. We also knew that they were not going to give the kids the multiple choice. That multiple choice test takes an hour and it's very challenging. College Board has offered live sessions for every AP course. It has all of these videos provided on their YouTube channel but some students still miss being in the classroom. Even though I feel like College Board has made it easier for us to pass, I still miss one-on-one -on -one instruction because it was more hands-on and you could learn a lot easier. Through quarantine, AP students have been granted the opportunity to still earn college credit. 
you can view these new exam format changes on collegeborg.org. Reporting for RNE TV Live, I'm Kincaid Cummings. Thank you, Kincaid. While studying and preparing for AP testing is important, giving yourself a brain break is equally as important. One way you can do this is by being more active. Here is RNE TV reporter Juliet Maxfield with more. Ever since the outbreak of COVID-19, people have been trying to find ways to stay active. Um, so I've been um, running more. Um, I've been working out in the garage. Um, with, I use elastic bands um, and I've been working out uh, with those a lot. It um, seems to me like more people are getting outside. I think people, you can only watch so much TV, you can only be on a computer so long. And I think with the weather being really good, um, you know, almost the only way to see somebody who's not in your family is to be outside. For many athletes, the ending of their season wasn't the end of them staying in shape. It's really important for me to stay active since I do do cross country and track and field. So I need to constantly be active in order to maintain my PR and my times. It's good for you. There's no reason to just like stop being healthy and stop uh, keeping your body the way it's supposed to be. At a time like this, I think working out is going to benefit us all because, I mean, it's just a good habit to get into. And now is the perfect time to do that because, I mean, to be honest, we really don't have anything else to do. Your body stays healthy, your like your muscles and immune system don't get as weak, so it will be less susceptible to like getting diseases like this or well, viruses like this. With gyms being closed, people have had to search for other ways to stay fit. Since all the gyms are closed right now, it, like the best place to find a workout's online. And if you're a member of a gym, like Orange Theory, a lot of them are putting their workouts online. So you can, if you have, you know, some of the same equipment, you can do those things at home. Here are a couple workouts to help keep you active during COVID-19. One way to start your workout is with push-ups. Get in plank position with your hands on the ground and push down with your arms, and then push up. After doing 15 to 20 push-ups, squats are the next exercise. Make sure your legs are shoulder length apart and bend your knees to squat. Next, we have up-downs. Get in plank position on your elbows and lift one arm and put your hand down, and then repeat on the other side. Then put one elbow back down and repeat. The next exercise is crunches. Act like you are sitting up, but slightly pick up your legs towards your upper body. Lastly, we have lunges. Simply bend your knee like you're walking downstairs, but go all the way down to the ground. Hopefully, you'll try out some of these workouts to help you stay active. Reporting for RNE TV Live, I'm Juliet Maxfield. Thanks, Juliet. You can look up your local gym or fitness instructor to see if they're offering virtual workout classes. Since social distancing started, health officials have been clear that washing your hands is a primary defense against the virus. Hand sanitizer is one way to clean your hands on the go, but many stores have limited stock. Here's RNE TV reporter Christy Perez with a DIY to help you out. In fear of COVID-19, department stores are running out of many essential items, such as toilet paper, soap, and hand sanitizer. So today, I'm going to show you how to make your very own hand sanitizer at home. In order to make the hand sanitizer, you're going to need rubbing alcohol, aloe vera, and a squirt bottle. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your squirt bottle, and you're going to grab your aloe vera and fill it two-thirds of the way up. Then you fill the rest of your bottle up with the alcohol. Then you put the lid on and you shake it up. And now you've got your very own bottle of hand sanitizer. Reporting for Arnie TV Live, I'm Christy Perez. Thanks, Christy. I'll try that when I run out of my hand sanitizer. That just about wraps up today's show. You can follow us on Twitter at Arnie Saber. You can also get updates from the district on all social media platforms. Just search Richland 2. This includes information on food pickup locations and Chromebook repair stations. Reporting for RNE TV, I'm Darius Darby. Stay safe, wash your hands, and remember it's always a great day to be a Cavalier. Thank you.